The wait is almost over. Training camp is coming up within a matter of days, folks. And on today's show, we're going to break down five key position battles to watch heading into training camp. We will tell you who's competing for these spots, and we'll show you some statistics, give you our analysis, and make our predictions of who is going to win each job. Before we do, a little quiz for the 12s out there today. I want you to spam the comments right now, and let's see who can name the most individual Seahawks quarterbacks of all time. Make a comment for each quarterback, and let's see who can come up with the most. Whether it's a starter or a backup, I don't care. Seahawks been around since 76. I want to see how many quarterbacks y'all can come up with. Whoever can name the most, you're going to get a shout-out on a later edition of Seahawks today. Let's start with the running back position, RB1. Kenneth Walker has started more games at the running back position than any back the last two seasons. He's coming off two straight years as the Seahawks' leading rusher. But you may recall a show we did a couple weeks ago where the folks at Seattle Sports Radio uh, were talking about the idea that it's not just a foregone conclusion that Kenneth Walker is the guy, that he is your number one running back, that Zach Charbonnet has a case to be made to potentially take that job away from Walker with a new coaching staff coming into place. Now, I think both guys will play a significant role in this Seahawks offense one way or the other. It could be split 60-40 when it comes to touches. could be 55-45. Whatever it may be, both of them will be heavily involved. So for me, I'm not so concerned who the RB1 is. I just want to see them both be used effectively. I want to downplay, though, the ability of Zach Charbonnet. I know that a lot of people just assume that Kenneth Walker is the guy. But Zach Charbonnet, from what we saw last year, he made a strong case of why he deserves to be heavily involved in this Seahawks offense. He rushed uh, for more yards per carry than Kenneth Walker did last year. 4.3 yards per carry. He played in more games than Kenneth Walker did last year. But you can see Kenneth Walker had more touchdowns with eight compared to one. He also had a bigger long with a 45-yard carry here. I like both guys. I hope they're both used effectively. But my pick, I still think Kenneth Walker is your RB1 when the season begins. We'll see both of them. We'll see both of them plenty. And also, I think a big factor is going to be how well each of them shape up in the passing game as receiving backs. And Charbonnet is a little bit better of a receiving back than Kenneth Walker is. I think we'll see more Kenneth Walker, but you'll see Zach Charbonnet take a step up from what his role was last year. What running back would you rather roll with? It's our pinned comment today. Let us know what you think. Type K9 for Kenneth Walker. Type Zach for Zach Charbonnet. Let us know in the comment section below. Seahawks Today is bringing you nonstop Seahawks coverage you won't find anywhere else. Daily news and rumors. Live shows twice a week throughout the offseason. We're doing Madden Sims for every Seahawks game, and anytime there's breaking news. I'm about to take a nice vacation, folks. Even if the Seahawks do something while I'm on vacation, we're going to still bring you a video and react to it as quick as we can here on the channel. Subscribe now, turn on notifications so you never miss a moment. Lock us in for free, youtube.com slash Seahawks TV to stay up to date on your Seattle Seahawks. Let's stay on offense and talk about the right guard position. The offensive line, the great unknown, if you will, for the Seattle Seahawks heading into 2024. Anthony Bradford coming in his second year out of LSU, started nine games last year. Meanwhile, Christian Haynes, the third-round rookie out of UConn. I don't care who wins the job, in all honesty. I don't have a dog in this fight between the two. I hope that they both play well and that they have a very good competition and the best man wins the job. At the end of the day... If you're Scott Huff, the Seahawks offensive line coach, and you're Ryan Grubb, the Seahawks OC, what you're just hoping for is that iron sharpens iron, that this competition makes each of them better, and that you make the right decision, and whoever wins the job plays at a high level. I think both these guys have shown flashes. I think the edge goes to Haynes a little bit when you compare these two, but I'm very optimistic that we're going to see both of them uh, at some point this year We know that the offensive line was 
very much mixed and matched throughout the year last year. But the edge for me slightly goes to Christian Haynes uh, compared to Anthony Bradford there. Anthony Bradford, although he didn't give up a ton of sacks last year, just one, he did give up a lot of pressures on the quarterback. That's going to have to improve. Which right guard would you rather roll with, Anthony Bradford or Christian Haynes? Type AB for Anthony Bradford. Type CH for Christian Haynes. Weigh in, let us know. Byron Murphy, we're going to talk about him coming up later on the show. We got his jerseys on sale now, chatsports.com slash Murphy. Free shipping available as well. Got the home blue jerseys, got the road whites, the alternate throwbacks, men's and women's options for you, all different shapes and sizes. Go see for yourself, chatsports.com slash Murphy. Free shipping available as well. The link is in the comments and description of today's video, chatsports.com slash Murphy. Let's go to the defensive side of the ball now. The Left corner back position. Mike Jackson and Trey Brown competing to see who's going to be the full-time starter. And this is a competition that dates all the way back to last year when Mike Jackson was coming off a strong 2022 campaign, looked very good in the offseason, and then looked awful in the preseason. Trey Brown stepped up. He won the job, had a really good game early on against the Detroit Lions, then dealt with some injury issues, and we saw – more of Mike Jackson as the year went on. That battle continues. We've seen the good and the bad from both these guys over the years. But ultimately, the thing that's going to determine who wins this job is who can be the most consistent. And that's a thing that both of them have struggled with is consistency over the years. Here is how the depth chart looks like. Mike Jackson is the odds-on favorite at the moment to win the job after holding on to it at the end of last year. We know Rick Wollin is going to be on one side, and Devin Witherspoon in that nickelback spot expected to be used similar to the role that we saw from Kyle Hamilton under Mike McDonald in Baltimore the last couple of years. But you look at the statistics, it was awfully close between these two last year. Same number of tackles. Same number of tackles for loss. Pass breakups edge to Trey Brown. Pat, uh, interceptions edge to Trey Brown. But Mike Jackson was available more than Trey Brown was, playing in two more games. I like Trey Brown a little bit more than I do Mike Jackson. This is one where I'm not betting on the favorite. Mike Jackson is the favorite, but I think as this battle wages on, that Trey Brown's ultimately going to come out on top, and the Seahawks have more invested in Trey Brown. They drafted him. He's still a young player, still has something to prove, if you will. And I think that Trey Brown gets the job done. Which corner do you think wins the job? You're on with Mike Jackson or you're on with Trey Brown? Type Mike for Mike Jackson. Type Trey for Trey Brown. Let us know in the comment section below. The defensive line. Man, this group is a hell of a lot better than what it was in 2023 with what the Seahawks have invested here. Jaron Reed and Leonard Williams are back. Draymond Jones is back after a disappointing season in 2023. He's the highest paid player on this Seahawks defense. And then you got Byron Murphy, the second Seahawks rookie out of the University of Texas. My expectation is that Draymond Jones will still be a key contributor. There's talk about him going back and forth between the defensive line and the outside linebacker position. He's going to be kind of a, a floater, if you will, asked to do a number of things. Meanwhile, I think Murphy is more of a constant, that as the year goes along, his snaps are going to go up, and he's going to be asked to do more. I think that he ultimately is your guy to hold things down on the defensive line there, alongside Leonard Williams and uh, you know Draymond Jones there and, and Jaron Reed and company. It's a good problem the Seahawks have at the moment, if you will, when it comes to the defensive linemen. Uh, as they have a number of options. And I've told you previously, don't sleep on Jonathan Hankins as well. Uh, the Seahawks have multiple players they can work with and play at a high level. Let's look at the numbers here. This is what Draymond Jones did last year. Despite all that money he was being paid, only came away with four and a half sacks. That was a career low. Also, a hey, career low in tackles for loss with just five last year, no forced fumbles. Meanwhile, Byron Murphy, I think it's worth noting, he's still learning the position. Last year, although he was the best defensive lineman in the Big 12 Conference, that was a uh, year that stood out from the rest. As his previous two seasons, he was still figuring himself out, if you will. One sack in 2022, two, two sacks in 2021. It's going to take time for Murphy to learn the position, but I still think he's the guy. 
and that he's going to have an outstanding career with the Seattle Seahawks. Peck, a defensive lineman. Which one has the edge right now? Are you rolling with Draymond Jones or are you rolling with Byron Murphy? Type DJ for Draymond Jones. Type BM for Byron Murphy. Let us know which guy you think will get more playing time and win the job. Last on our position battle list, we turn our attention to the wide receiver five spot. And we have a couple of different candidates here. Chenault, who you brought in from the Carolina Panthers in free agency. D. Eskridge, by some shape or form, is still here, still present, although he is one of the worst draft picks in recent memory for the CLC Hawks. And then there's Derek Young, who the Seahawks selected in the seventh round a couple of years ago, was injured most of last year. Uh, but they like what they've seen from him in the past, in the preseason and in training camp and all that. There's a big drop-off from that wide receiver four spot. We already know. DK, Tyler, JSN, and Bobo hold down those top four spots. But it's up for grabs. It's anybody's taking for that number five receiver spot. And whoever wins this job has got to do something spectacular. they got to do something to separate themselves, if you will. You look at the statistics, Chenault last year didn't do a ton in Carolina. It's just 10 catches for 60 total yards last year. D. Eskridge was totally MIA last year for Seattle with literally no stats and only 17 career catches at this point. And then there's Derek Young, who we didn't see last year. 2022 had two total catches on two targets for 24 yards. It's anyone's guess. I would say that I would lean towards Chenault winning that wide receiver five job. The Seahawks went out and found him. They paid the money to bring him in. He's got the best statistics of any of the three, but there's certainly an opportunity. Uh, This is wide open that any of them could potentially win this job when it's all said and done. If you had to pick which one becomes the wide receiver five and earns a roster spot, you're not just battling for playing time. You're battling for a roster spot here between these five. Type LV for Chenault. Type D for D. Eskridge. Type DY for Derek Young. Let us know in the comments section who that is, and we will see you next time here on Seahawks Today.